Okay, good evening, everybody. Today is Wednesday, August 10th. Time is 6.30 p.m. and I am calling this meeting of the Macomb Township Board of Trustees to order. We will now say the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next closing, we please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Cusimano. Here. Trustee Lucido. Here. Trustee Oliver. Here. Trustee Nevers. Present. Treasurer Dolet. Absent. Clerk Posey here. Supervisor Viviano. Here. All right, moving on to approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Mr. Chairman, I have a proposed add-on for 13A to request to approve the promotion of Ed Carey from election coordinator to election supervisor. That's all I have. Motion to approve the agenda as corrected. Second. I wasn't making the motion. I was asking for the motion. I'm sorry. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. My mistake. I wasn't clear. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, motion by Trustee Cusmano. Supported by Trustee Albert to approve the amended agenda. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, item three, approval of the bills. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Or Is there any discussion on the bill run? Hearing none, motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Trustee Nevers to approve the bills. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, moving on to item four, approval of the previous meeting's minutes from July 27th. Move to approve. Trustee Kuzma seconds. Any discussion? Motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Kuzmano to approve the previous meeting's minutes. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, now moving on to the consent, I'm sorry, moving on to public comment. At this time, if anybody wishes to make public comment, this is for agenda items only. Please make your way to the microphone on the right-hand side of the room. If there's anyone participate, participating remotely, uh, please digitally raise your hand. You will be called upon. Please state your name and address for the record, and please remember there's a three-minute time limit. Thank you. Jason Harding, 24550 Pebble Beach Lane. Uh, I'm here to express my displeasure with the board's decision to allow saw cutting of concrete during noise restriction ordinance hours from last meeting. Uh, I live and work at a home. Uh, from home in a permanent construction zone. And the only relief I get is during these hours. Uh, the ordinance is constantly being violated and police have been called numerous times by multiple residents, not just me, and only warnings have been given. Uh, the purpose of this ordinance is to protect the taxpayers from this nuisance and allow for the quiet enjoyment of our property. Yet you allowed this to be violated up to 10 p.m. with concrete saws. I hope this never happens again. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else present wish to make a public comment? Uh, it's Neil Kaffenberger, 46684 Fox Run Drive. Um, I'm here on uh, agenda item number 20 of called uh, the encroachment for the two residents over on Peach Grove. You have to remember back in 2018, the summer 2018, the people of Fox Run subdivision on Fox Run Drive that lived up against Township's property were forced to remove gardens, statues, fences, and sheds. We were forced to move them. My personal opinion is we were forced because we were opposing them putting in a dog park. Basically, they they came to our side of the sub and they attacked us with all the stuff. We all applied, we all moved all our stuff. So we had nothing on township property. 
now to allow them to continue uh, before I believe they had permits before, but now it looks like it's up for renew. You know what? It's time for them to get off of township property, just like we were forced. Because we used to cut the grass, trim the drawn trees, made it all look nice and everything. But, you know, that wasn't good enough. Miss Posey, I'm sure you remember. Miss Nevers, you should remember all this. And I don't think the encroachment should be approved because, like I said, we were forced off. So should, so should they. Thank you. Bye. Any other public comment at this time? Anybody participating remotely wish to participate? Okay, we're going to close public comment. We're going to move on to the consent agenda. Motion. And to approve the consent agenda in its entirety. Or discussion on the consent items. Hearing none, motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Lucido. To approve the consent agenda. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. So now we're going to move on to item seven, which is a public hearing. And it will also be a resolution. So first we're going to hold the public hearing. Um, and I will open the floor in a moment. Mr. Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor, board members. Uh, before you have a request from Allied Photochemical, for a industrial facilities tax exemption uh, for the maximum that the township is uh, passed to be allowed, which is nine years. There is an industrial development district that has been created for this, uh, which we did, I believe, in March. And this is just for the addition that is being added on to the building. Uh, it went out for review. There were no objections to the request. I am available to answer any questions should you have them. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. <clears throat> so at this time, I'm going to open the public hearing on this IFT. Um, time is 6.37 p.m. If there is anyone who wish to make comment on the, on the resolution to grant this IFT, you can make your way to the microphone on the right-hand side of the room or raise your hand digitally. I don't see anybody present who wishes to make public comment. Roger, anyone? No, sir. Okay. So at this time, if there is no comment in the public hearing, I will close the public hearing. The time is still 6.37 p.m. So with that, is there a motion to approve the resolution granting the industrial facilities tax exemption tax abatement allied photochemical? So move. Is there a discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, in review of this motion, for this motion, um, I found a typographical error in paragraph two of the resolution. Second paragraph, second line reads, after granting, G-R-A-T-I-N-G, this certificate, I believe it should be granting certificate. Uh, would I present that to Madam Clerk? Correction. Thank you. I have no other comments regarding the matter. We need to. No, we're not we correct. Before we sign. <clears throat> All right. If there's no more discussion, a motion by Trustee Never, supported by Trustee Lacito, to approve the resolution granting the industrial facilities tax exemption tax abatement for Allied Photochemical. Proposing we call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Nevers. Yes. Trustee Lucido. Yes. Trustee Cusimano. Yes. Trustee Oliver. Yes. Clerk Posey. Yes. Supervisor Viviano. Yes. That resolution is adopted. Thank you, board members. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Moving on to item eight, we have a request to adopt a resolution ordering the adjustment of the street lighting district assessments. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Grant Eflin. Yes, Mr. Chairman, board members. As the board's aware, uh, uh, special assessment districts uh, for street lightings are set up for each of the individual subdivisions. Um, these are, uh, the district is set up 
uh, we contract with DTE to actually install the lights. They give us the annual lamp charge. Um, the SAD says that it's supposed to be adjusted according to what the township is being charged. However, over the years, the township has never made any adjustments to special assessment district. So essentially a, a subdivision that was constructed 20 years ago is being charged the same rate that they were 20 years ago for the lights, even though DTE has adjusted the rates up for the most part over the years. So um, in order for us to make the adjustments, we've had to do a complete audit of all the streetlights within the township's system. Uh, that is necessary because DTE only gives us a bill for the lights. They don't break it down by subdivision. So we had to go in and figure out what lights were in low, what subdivision, um, what types of lights they were, how many heads were on the lights. So it was a very complicated thing. Uh, Crystal Kozak in engineering spent a whole lot of time the last couple of years trying to figure all this out. They work with DTE and, and Treasury um, trying to figure out figure this all out. So we have a gigantic spreadsheet that we now can, uh, as DTE makes adjustments, we can adjust accordingly. Uh, it'll be something that we'll review every year uh, and make sure that DTE ha either hasn't made adjustments or if they've made adjustments, we'll be able to bring that to the board so the board can, can approve it. Uh, we worked with the uh, township attorney to draft the appropriate resolution so that we can effectively change all of the special assessment districts throughout the township in one in one resolution. Attached to the resolution that's in the board packet is an exhibit that shows all of the individual subdivisions that have special assessment districts, uh, what the original uh, uh, land, an, annual land charge has been uh, to this point, and what we're proposing to adjust it to. If you look at the individual uh, subdivisions, some have gone up, and but a few have gone down, uh, and that has to do with some of the uh, Public Service Commission uh, and DT working together the last few years with regard to LED lights, especially some of those charges have actually gone down, uh, but then they've held their charges uh, due to COVID and, and other things economy recently. So uh, anyway, the, the we're recommending approval. The uh, township should be reviewing this every year, like I said, and so this will be something that will be regularly brought to the board as we see changes in, in we think that changes need to be made. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them. Thank you, Mr. Van Tuckel. Any questions or discussion? I had a, go ahead, no, go ahead. After you, trustees. Just um, I, looking through, I see where you said some are higher, some are lower. Do you have a bottom line number of we've been subsidizing or? Yeah, over the years that that number has changed. At one point, it was upwards of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now I, I think it's down to about forty thousand. If you take the, the township lights out of the region, yeah. um, one one other thing we're probably going to be doing here in the future is looking at the lights that the township specifically pays for. You remember we put a bunch of lights on Heidenreich and Twenty One Mile, for example. Um, we want to look at all those lights to make sure that we have the most energy efficient lights. So those that'll be something that we'll bring to the board um, later on. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lucido. Trustee Guzman? Uh, yes, I, I did a little analysis for my own subdivision, Ultimate Farms, and Ultimate Farms Phase 2. It's going up from $86.28 to $89.55, which comes out to be a 4% increase. In other words, it's... $3.27 more per home per year. Does that sound? Yeah, and, and these vary depending on when the lights were installed and what lights were, were in the development uh, at, at the time. The, the older the subdivision, more than likely the larger the increase just because a subdivision that's been there for 30 years has seen uh, an increase over the years a lot more than a subdivision that might be there for 10 years. And my, my subdivision, for example, has gone up, I think, 18%. So it just depends on what the, when the sub was built. And if any residents are curious about the difference between the high pressure sodium lights and the LED lights, we had a meeting with the, a representative from DT Energy via Zoom. Do you recall that meeting? Yes. And um, it's a distribution charge per lamp. And as in the response to the inquiry about changing out the lights to more efficient LED lights, 
you tell the residents what basically we were told? Yeah, it, a lot of the fee that the, the subdivision C in, in, in the annual lamp charge has to do with the maintenance of, of the light, not necessarily the energy. So the savings, we, we can certainly look at that as the prices of high pressure sodium versus the LED goes up and down. Um, you know, right now might be a good time for us to, to look at that. But up until recently, it really, the payback is has been long on the conversion. In my recollection of the meeting was is that they basically told us that you're stuck with whatever you have and that it's a there's a per lamp charge and it's a distribution fee, not so much as an energy fee, and that they've been moving in that direction. Yeah, yeah. But, right. Part part of the, the conversion, because there's a cost of the conversion itself. So you have to look at what it costs to actually make the conversion and then what you're are you going to save every year and how long is it going to take for you to pay that back. And, and yeah, in some cases, it, it it might not make sense. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Good morning. Just a quick question for sure. so so the, some of the older lights, if they just totally fail, are they just automatically replaced with an LED? We, for the most part, no, because you know you don't want to necessarily stick a different style lamp so, yeah. in in a uh, an older subdivision. We've had some specialized lights that we have decided to retire and and put in our standard acorn style light. And in that case, yeah, it would be converted to, to LED. Okay. But generally, you wouldn't stick an LED in the middle of five sodium. So the, yeah, the, the light itself is gonna look totally different. The uh, high pressure sodium has more of a yellow yep. tint to it, whereas the LED is more of a bright white look. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Oliver. There's no more discussion. Motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Posey, uh, to adopt the resolution ordering an adjustment of the street lighting district assessments. Sir Posey, we call the roll. Mr. Chairman, Trustee Oliver? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Trustee Cusmano? Yes. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Supervisor Vivian? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on to item nine is a request to accept the formal SAD petition, Vintage Lane Road replacement, um, SAD number MA 105-P, and to adopt the resolution number one. Motion? So moved. Support. Mr. Van Tilfon? Yes, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, this is essentially the second phase to the Chelsea Park subdivision uh, road replacement project. We had to break it out into two different projects in order to maximize the amount of money that we received from the county. Um, the uh, subdivision uh, homeowners association group uh, went and uh, obtained all the signatures that they could for vintage lane um, within the subdivision. Uh, the petition uh, signatures have been verified. It looks like we've got north of 80 percent. Um, that want the project to move forward. So we are very comfortable uh, with recommending that we adopt resolution number one to the board. Uh, this will allow us to apply uh, with the county uh, for the 50% funding up to the half million dollars. And then it'll be up to the county to evaluate all the uh, requests that they get and, and award it sometime later this year. So if everything goes according to plan, we would be under construction next year uh, on this road like we will be for the first phase of this development uh, this this coming October, I believe. <clears throat> Recommending approval, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Van Tiffel. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Trustee Nevers, to accept the SAD district petition for Vintage Lane Road and to adopt resolution number one. All the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Lucido? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Trustee Cusimano? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Clerk Posey, yes. Supervisor Viviano? Yes. And resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Van Tiffelman. Moving on to item 10 is a request to approve the purchase umbrellas from SDM Industries for the picnic tables at Waldenburg Park. 
for motion. Trustee Kuzmano will make the motion. I'll support that. Who's got the support? Oliver. Oh. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Evening board members. Parks and Recreation Department is requesting permission to purchase umbrellas for the new picnic tables at Waldenburg Park Circle. We've received three quotes ranging from $12,477.50 to $14,907.65. This time we are recommending we purchase the umbrellas from STM Industries for a price of $12,477.50. This includes six umbrellas and shipping. I've included the quotes, the confirmation of process memo, and the purchasing specialist. This is a budgeted item, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. DeCaro. Any questions or discussion? I got a question. Sure. So are them, them are a seasonal umbrella that will di disconnect, take down? Yes. So when will we put them up? Which, well, we're waiting for the tables to come in. We're, we're not, yeah, when we're up and running. Right, yeah. So the, when we start a new season. Oh, yeah, no, they'll be ready. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this year, we're hoping. Okay, we'll already have them up this year. Good. We're hoping to, yes. If we and can. take them down for the winter. Correct. Yep. Not the tables. The tables will stay. The tables will stay. I get yeah. it. I didn't mean to trip you out. But. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Fiberglass. They're fiberglass. Sorry, that's correct. So they're uh, they don't open and close. They just stay open. Right, but all that stuff uh, it, it it suffers so much during yeah. winter. Yeah. Uh, the uh, fiberglass expands and stretches, and where it's seamed, correct. it'll crack. Yeah. The winter it'd be thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have dollars for six umbrellas. Means, am I to understand the shipping cost is over six hundred dollars per? Correct. That is correct. And that's consistent with the size of these. Yes. Reassembled. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee Guzman. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, trust, uh, motion by Trustee Kuzman, supported by Trustee Oliver, to approve the purchase of umbrellas from STM Industries for the picnic tables at Waldenburg Park. Please vote. <coughs> motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item 11 is a request to approve the purchase of cardio equipment from Matrix and All Pro Exercise Fitness Things. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Support. Yeah. Mr. Carroll. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Parks and Recreation Department is requesting permission to purchase cardio equipment for the Recreation Center. If approved, this purchase will complete the process of replacing the cardio equipment that began in June. At this time, we're recommending we purchase eight pieces of equipment from Matris for a cost of $33,098 and nine pieces of octane equipment from all pro exercise slash fitness things for a total for a cost of $50,128 for a total cost of $83,226. Both Matrix and all pro exercise fitness things are sole source providers their equipment. I've included the quotes, the confirmation of process memo from the purchasing specialist. This is a budgeted item and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. DeCaro. Questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, if I may, can you just give a general idea of what the cardio equipment includes? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. An idea of what the cardio equipment includes. Is it treadmills? Yeah, so yeah, I have the list right here. I've included the list for you. Um, the matrix is all treadmills. Okay. Octane is some ellipticals, a couple of bikes. So replacing, the, so we used to lease our equipment, we now purchase them, and then we they have a buyback to it. So we do that every three years. That's just my next question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carl. Any other questions? We have a motion by Clerk Posey, supported by Trustee Lucido, to approve the purchase of cardio equipment 
the matrix and all pro exercise fitness things. Please vote. Oh, it passes unanimously. Thank you, Bart. Yeah. Moving on to item 12, there's a request to promote Pizzoli to the position of fire inspector. So moved. Cord. Charlie? No. Who's my Mr. De Mr. Tabaka. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor and board members. I'm here to request a promotion in the fire department. HR recruited for the position of the fire inspector. This position was posted in compliance with the IAFF CBA agreement. There were five applicants for this position. Collection committee has selected Vince Pazuli. Vince is currently a full-time firefighter with Macomb Township for four plus years. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. If approved, this promotion will go into effect immediately. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. This is a budgeted position. Mr. Tobacco. Any questions or discussion? None. We have a motion by Trustee Lucido, supported by Trustee Cusmano, Mount Vince Pizzuli to fire inspector. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And to item 13 is the request to hire Jason Lapari as the IT manager. Motion. So moved. Dabaka. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor and board members. I'm here requesting authorization to extend our offer and employment to Jason Lapari for the IT manager position. This position was posted in compliance with the Ask Me CB agreement. HR received several resumes for this position and interviewed three applicants. The interview team consisted of Supervisor Deputy Jody Claycomb, IT consultant Alan McCarrick, and myself. We are requesting to hire Jason Lapari to the position of IT manager. If to prove it's contingent upon successful completion of all post offer requirements, and we're looking at a higher date for August 29th. Again, a um, budgeted position. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tobacco. And we have a motion by Trustee Lucido, supported by Trustee Nevers. Hire Jason Lapari into the IT manager position. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And to the next item, this is our add on item 13A. Uh, is there a motion to promote Ed Carey to the position of election supervisor? So moved. Support. Tabaka. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor and board members. I'm here to request a promotion in the clerk's office due to a recent resignation. Employee was serving the role as election supervisor, and HR is recommending Ed Carey for this position. Ed is currently an elections coordinator and was hired within the township on October 20th of 2020. Ed was originally one of our three candidates who we interviewed back in April. Again, thank you for your consideration of the matter. It is a budgeted position, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Tabaka. Any discussion or questions? And hearing none, motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Trustee Lucido, to approve the promotion of Ed Carey to election supervisor. Members, please vote. This will be a voice vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Add on. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. All right, moving on. Thank you, Jeff. Moving on to item 14. We have a request to for the. Uh, uh, Excuse me. Item 14, a request for authorization to begin design work and bid documents for the concrete replacement at fire station number two. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Chief? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the current uh, budget, fire improvement budget, included uh, $650,000 for the replacement 
of concrete at Fire Station 2. Uh, the concrete was originally poured in late 1988 when the station uh, was built. The concrete has deteriorated over the years and is in, in need of replacement. At this time, I'm requesting your approval to work with engineering and facility and grounds to proceed with the design and the design work and development of the bid documents. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? One quick. Yep. So are we going to start at the road and just all the way around all the concrete? Or I, it would. The initial conversation we've had, it would be done in either two or three phases where we would start uh, the front of the building uh, and then work from the back and then to the side. So that we allow the trucks to still be able to get in out through the whole process. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have a motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Trustee Lacido, authorize uh, the beginning of design work and bid documents for the concrete replacement at fire station number two. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is a request to accept hazard mitigation grant program award in the amount of $50,400. Your motion? So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, as the emergency management liaison for the township, I submitted a grant application in February of 2021 on behalf of the Department of Public Works for funding for a backup generator of pump station number eight uh, in the amount of $56,000. The application required a 25% local match if awarded. Uh, pump station number eight was identified in our 2018 hazard mitigation plan as uh, lacking in need of a backup generator. As a result of the flooding that occurred in the Midland area in June of 2020, FEMA authorized grant funds for municipalities in need of backup generators at high priority infrastructure sites. Pump station number eight met the criteria as it had previously been identified as a high priority site. January of 2021, I spoke with uh, Supervisor Viviano and Mr. Wangland and informed them of the grant opportunity. Supervisor Viviano indicated there had been discussions regarding the need for the backup generator and the, uh, at that location and authorized me to submit the application on behalf of the township. I worked with engineering and DPW to get in the necessary information and submitted the application in February, 2021. I received notice uh, on July 18th of 2022, the township was officially awarded the grant in the amount of $50,400 and the 25% match requirement had been reduced to 10%. So therefore I'm requesting your approval to accept the grant in the amount of 50,000 $400 for the installation of a backup generator at pump station number eight. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, we have a motion by Trustee Lucido, supported by Clerk Posey. The <laughs> mitigation grant board in the amount of $50,000. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 16 is a request to approve purchase of replacement backup batteries for the DS200 ballot tabulators from elections systems and software in the amount of $12,696.59. Is there a motion? So moved. Trustee Coons, my own support. Clerk Posey? Uh, members of the board, our DS200 tabulators have a backup battery to power the tabulator during a power outage. The current batteries are at the end of their five-year life per election systems and software guidance. The batteries will be installed at no cost by an EN ESNS technician. Um, so I'm requesting approval for the purchase of the backup batteries uh, per the guidance of our election system software. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions or discussion? Question. No. What do they do with all the old? Are they taking the old batteries? Yeah, they take them back. Okay. Dispose of them. Good. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I got a couple yep. questions. Are battery backups required? Yes. By state law or regulation? State law and our uh, election system software for that. Like the tabulators for us. Tabulator with this battery backup meet all the legal requirements. 
specifications as required by the Secretary of State? Yes. And are the DS 200 ballot tabulators manufactured by Dominion? No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no other questions. Thank you, Trustee Kuzman. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion by Trustee Never, supported by Trustee Kuzmano, to approve the purchase of replacement backup batteries for the DS200 ballot tabulators. So, motion passes unanimously. Moving on to the next item. Item 17 is a request to appoint Mr. James Veal Jr. to the Macomb, to the Clinton Macomb Public Library Board. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Um, a few months back, Mr. Latito, who was the previous um, member of the community serving in this role, uh, resigned his position on the library board. Uh, we put the call out for applicants. We received a number of very, very well qualified applicants. Um, I sat with Mr. Veal, got to know him a little bit. Uh, um, he also sat and talked to members of the library board and the library director, Mr. Kim. Um, all of us agreed that Mr. Veal would be an excellent fit on the library board. He brings 18 years of professional experience um, with him. He, in talking to him, uh, I was confident that he both recognizes and, and is willing to serve as our representative to the library board, both understanding the fiduciary responsibility and the fact that we want our library to be an asset, not only now, but in the years to come. So very excited that Mr. Veal is willing to serve us. And with that, I will take any questions from the board. Hearing none, I have a motion by Trustee Oliver, supported by Trustee Lucido, appoint Mr. James Veal Jr. Jr. to the Clinton Macomb Public Library Board. Please vote. Passes unanimously. Well, I should have noted that this will be for the remainder of Mr. Uh, Latito's term and expires on April 30th. Okay, great. Congratulations, Mr. Veal. Moving on to the next item. It's a request to adopt and publish an amended animal control ordinance. This would be for the Macomb Township Ordinances, Chapter 4, Article 2 by repealing and replacing section 416 in its entirety. Is there a motion? Trustee Kuzman makes a motion. Second. Um, so this was brought to us uh, actually by way of the uh, um, chief of animal control of the county. He has been uh, requested Cone Township adopt the uh, draft ordinance that he had prepared for some time. Uh, myself, um, Treasurer Gillette, and Council reviewed it. Um, we made some small amendments to it, and instead of adopting in its entirety, we, we adopt the portions that we thought were most relevant, or were suggesting adopting the portions that are most relevant to Macomb Township. Um, the ordinance is in the packet. So with that, I will accept any questions from the board. Any discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion by Domron. Motion by Trustee Kuzmano, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Supported by Clerk Posey. To Adopt and publish the amended animal control ordinance by repealing and replacing section 416 in its entirety. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item 19 is a request to amend the hours of operation for equipment and construction. Uh, this is for Macomb Township Code of Ordinances, Chapter 11, Article 3, Section 11 41. Is there a motion? Trustee Kuzman will make the motion. For a second. 
Gordon. So this is a follow-up to um, what we did two weeks ago uh, when we granted a waiver uh, for Miss Wood development. Uh, in talking to Mr. Van Tiflin and the rest of our staff, this is that waiver was a, a regular occurrence that the construction of roads specifically necessitates longer work days in order for them to be constructed properly. Um, so it, it was uh, suggested that we change this um, ordinance for road construction to go from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. <clears throat> I recognize that it's an inconvenience. It is a long-term benefit to the township and to the residents who are going to be living on that road because as we've been going through uh, with our road reconstruction program, replacing the roads is extremely expensive. And if they fall apart prematurely, um, that's a town, township and the residents are going to have to absorb. So it's in all of our best interest that the roads are built to the highest standards um, that we can allow for. Also on this, as part of this amendment, is changing the standard construction and noise from uh, to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And that's simply an adjustment that puts us more in line with our neighbors who all um, Shelby, Chesterfield, and Clinton Township all start at 7 a.m. with their uh, noise restrictions. So with that, I will take any questions from the board. Yes, Mr. Just one question. Um, I, I have had a couple of conversations with some residents. Um, I guess if Mr. Van Tiflin could kind of give us some idea of how, I guess some of these contractors are, are they shortening the amount of time that they might be on these job sites by working longer hours throughout the day? Or is it more of a material thing? Not so much for the roads. I understand the roads completely, but some of the residents were saying, you know, 7 a.m. is too early and 7 p.m. is too late for their, you know, kids getting to school and things of that nature. Can you speak to any of that? Yeah, I, you know, it, it, like I've, I've said, the, when the Myers thing came up in, in the last one for Mistwood, this road work in the saw cutting is very weather dependent. You know, the weather changes throughout the day. It's hard for the contractor to predict when the saw cutting can be done. And the county won't let them start saw cutting until that pavement is ready. And then there's a window that they need to get this done. And if they don't get it done, then all that pavement needs to be removed. And again, it's hard to predict in the morning, you know, when they have to stop in order to meet, you know, a, a, a six o'clock deadline, which is where we're at right now. So yeah, the supervisor is correct. We have had this problem in, in most of our subdivisions when they're being built, especially in the middle of the summer, when it's hot, you know, wind, uh, uh, humidity all has a, a, an effect on, on the cure time for the roads. Uh, and obviously we want, you know, quality roads and, you know, having construction joints, you know, by having shorter pours is not, not the solution. We want to be, you know, fair to the residents. We also get them in and out as quickly as possible, which is, I think, think your point. Um, it, you know, but also have, you know, the ability to go into those extended hours uh, in order to ensure that they've got the saw cuts done before, uh, you know, the concrete cures to a, a point where they they can't do it anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lucido. Any other discussion or comment? Hearing none, we have a motion by Trustee Kuzmano, supported by Trustee Oliver, to amend the hours of operation for equipment and construction. It would be for section, um, sorry, for chapter 11, article three, section 11-41. Members, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to item 20, is a request to approve a temporary encroachment agreement for 46655 Peach Grove and four Four six six seven seven Peach Grove. Is there a motion? Okay. One. Okay. So item fails. Lack of. 
Moving on to public comment. For non-agenda items, this would be for um, three minutes. Anyone who wishes to make comment on non-agenda items, yes. your opportunity. One present. Anyone digitally? Just raise your hand. All right. Moving on. Moving on to board comments. <coughs> Uh, just a couple from down here. I uh, just uh, congratulate Mr. Terry. I hope I'm saying the names correct uh, after Mr. Pizzoli, Mr. Lapari, Mr. Veal uh, on your new positions that we uh, voted on this evening. And I also want to thank the chief for procuring uh, the grant for the generator. Uh, thanks to everybody for the hard work and also Mr. Van Tiflin and anybody else that was part of redoing the DTE. Uh, a special assessment districts and saving the township money over a long period of time. That's always something I'm uh, in favor of. So thank you very much for all your hard work on that. That's it. Okay. And I would like to congratulate everybody in the collective. I didn't have all the names written down, but uh, congratulations and it's best for Ed Carey as well. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Nevers. Trustee Oliver. Same thing, Mr. Pozzoli, uh, Ed Carey. Mr. Veal, you're here tonight. Thank you uh, for stepping up. We're always looking for people to be on these boards, so we appreciate that. And, um, thank the clerk for having a very successful election. I'm sure she's got some comments on it, so I'm not complaining, <laughs> nothing away from her. And that's about it. Thank you, Trustee Oliver. Trustee Guzman. No comments tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Proposal. Um, I'd like to congratulate everyone on their positions this evening. Um, welcome to welcome aboard or and congratulate you on your promotions. Um, most of all, I want to talk about the most recent election. I want to take the time to personally thank every township employee and election worker for your contributions to the successful administration of the August state primary election. The incredible amount of time, resources, and work on your part over many weeks and even many months cannot be overstated. I know it was long and stressful day for many of you, but your work resulted in truly accomplished day for Michigan's democracy. Over 2 million voters across the state of Michigan cast a ballot and you helped ensure their votes were safely and securely counted. Macomb Township had a 21% turnout on Tuesday, August 2nd with 19,418 voters of which 61% uh, voted by absentee ballot. To my staff and the clerk's department, my personal thanks to you for your commi continued commitment to Macomb Township elections. Together we execute the Super Bowl on election day, and I am grateful to each and every one of you for all the work that you do. And that's all I have. Thank you, Clerk Posey. Um, I wanna add to my congratulations to our uh, all of the employees that were promoted today um, and, and to Mr. Lepari for his new position. I feel like we got stronger today. Congratulations to Mr. Veal. We're glad to have you as part of our uh, representative on the McComb, on the Clinton McComb Library Board. So that's great that the board's filled out. Uh, I want to th thank all of the voters in McComb Township for passing the Parks and Rec Millage. Uh, that will help us stabilize our funding for the future. Uh, we have a lot of great things planned for our park system, and we're looking forward to bringing you even bigger and better things. And with that. That is all the comments I have. This time, I would like, I'm, I'm requesting a motion to go into closed session to consult with legal counsel regarding trial strategy in connection with case number, uh, actually it's cases number 21-CV-10570 and 2020-001432-CD for MCL, 15.2681 each. Trustee Kuzman makes the motion. Support. And discussion on the motion. Hearing none. Motion by Trustee Kuzmano, supported by Lucido. <coughs> Closed session for MCL 15.2681E. Propose you would call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Kuzmano. Yes. Trustee Lucido. Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Nevers? Yes. Clerk Posey? Yes. Supervisor Viviana? Yes. Motion is. 
I'm, we are going into closed session. The time is 19. That's someone's always in So, Mr. Veal, I'll have to have you come by the office to get sworn in. We'll contact you on Monday. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, you know how you when you plug it in, it's like I don't know, connected there. I didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know, all those people are not really smart in that moment. We got all in there. That's probably the same. No, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Get this over with. Um, I just saw it walk up to this this afternoon. I saw it, so I thought you okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be my interview. All right, guys. Have a good night. Have a good vacation, man. See you on Tuesday. <laughs>